situation, stress, and the weather. You are very much affected by the barometric pressure. When that drops, when that pressure just takes a plummet, forget about it. Meanwhile, I would jump back and be all startled and probably unsettled for the rest of the evening. I feel like there's a tight band around my head. My head feels like it's blowing up like a balloon. I have constant pressure headaches. If I understand correctly, there are two systems that regulate our body functioning. So it's the ANS and PNS. PNS, because I can't pronounce them. Right. So basically, after you have a brain injury, they become dysregulated. And an example of that was if me and my husband were in the kitchen and he accidentally dropped a dish, he would go, oh, I dropped a dish. Meanwhile, I would jump back and be all startled and probably unsettled for the rest of the evening because it scared the crap out of me. Whereas before the brain injury, I would have had the response he would have had and been like, oh crap, a dish broke. Right. We're going to move on to the migraine headaches. Those are probably the most common type of headache other than your just typical, oh, my head's hurting, you know, which a lot of headaches come from dehydration, little known fact. And actually, you just, didn't you just suffer from that a few days ago? Yeah, I had a really bad um, migraine and I couldn't figure it out because there was nothing that triggered me post-concussion wise. And I was thinking back through my day, what could have triggered it? And then I realized, oh, I drank a lot of coffee today, but I think maybe only a bottle, bottle and a half of water. So after I rehydrated with, we always keep electrolyte water for situations like this. Yeah. Um, once I rehydrated with electrolyte water, I was better, but it was like, wow, I went through the whole day with a headache, not realizing it was from dehydration. Yeah. And that's, you know, even people that don't have brain injuries or mm-hmm. post-concussion syndrome, that's like the major thing to first ask yourself, have I had enough to drink today? You know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and soft drinks a- don't really qualify as, as mm-hmm. hydrating yourself because actually if I'm if I'm incorrect, correct me, but soft drinks can actually dehydrate you. Can I, can they not? Um, I know caffeinated ones can, I'm not sure about ones that don't have caffeine. So any medical professionals watching cough, cough, Dr. Miller, cough, cough, drop it in the line. Okay. So Rob, isn't it my understanding too? There's another, uh, type of headache out there called the migraineous. You're absolutely correct. And that's what we refer to as migraines, but the medical term for it is migraineous. These typically present as an extreme stabbing pain in the top of the head, either on one side or the other. And the auras, which are black and white spots in your vision, they can also be a strange smell. Um, It can be a tingling in your hands of all things. I don't know if people realize that or not. I always just thought if you had a migraine headache, it was all your headache, but if you're having the vision spots or the tingle in your hands, that's also an indicator of, of a uh, migraine headache. And you'll have sensitivity to light, touch, or smell. I don't know if you've, if you've had migraines, so you know sometimes with the migraine, the smells can really trigger you and even make you kind of nauseous. Mm-hmm. I don't experience that as much. It's more the sensitivity to like lights, especially like those fluorescent lights mm-hmm. and another thing too is the the dizziness mm-hmm. you ever experienced dizziness with a migraine um the start of it not like it's almost like a progression symptom for me but not once it's full blown on this leads right into the next segment <clears throat> is the uh, uh ans headaches like i was referring to earlier Vision problems are a big common culprit. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and that actually, I think they, yeah, it even says that it can increase uh, vision issues, pulsing headaches, and it can even make you feel like your eyes are inflamed or pained. I don't know how your eyes would be inflamed, but that's Mm -hmm. okay. Moving on. Vestibular issues can lead to headaches. Yeah, what you said can also lead to headaches. Your, what you said, system 
located in your inner ear helps your brain to understand your position in space, your body vision, your vestibular. Did I say that vestibular. correctly? Vestibular. Yeah. Yeah. I think I nailed it. And brain all work together to help you move without symptoms. If a concussion affects your system, you might experience headaches, nausea, dizziness, dizziness, balance issues, spatial disorientation, and more. Mm -hmm. And the third common pro thing that leads to those types of headaches are sleep problems. Wow. I know many people have issues with sleep. And I know in today's society, we're all distracted by these things here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they reduce our amount of sleep. So getting a lot of sleep is the best thing you can do for your brain. Your brain needs a lot of rest to function properly. Absolutely. Struggle is real. What are some treatments for headaches? Medications. Um, they do work for many. They don't work for all. It's not a right. one-stop shop. So depending on the type of headache, medication can bring some relief, but it's short term. If you've had a concussion, it's in the first 48 hours that generally you would take, you know, whatever the doctor prescribes you. It's not a long-term fix. Um, you can do the over-the-counter pain medication. It's okay to take for a few days, but again, not a long-term fix. You just want to talk to your doctor to see what's the best course of action for yourself. This has been a very interesting episode. And Ashley, what do you have to bring to the table? To recap, there are a lot of different types of headaches out there that you might be experiencing as someone with post-concussion syndrome or another type of brain injury. And we hope that by describing the different headaches to you and what they look like, as well as the wonderful visual that Rob provided, we were able to provide you with a little bit more insight. Thank you, Ashley. As always, it's been fun being with you guys, and we hope that this has been educational for you as well as uh, entertaining. And please drop us a comment below so that we know, you know, what it is that you would like to, to hear from us. You know, we want this to be a community and also a safe place for people that are survivors of brain injuries. Um, so, that's my closing thoughts. Ashley, you want to give us the little spiel? Uh, like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everybody. Have a great night.